Hey, this is Chris again. Welcome back to another video about uh, fine black and white photography. In this video, I want to talk a bit about applying things like reciprocity factors in the field, uh, depth of field calculations, and bellows extension factors like we have on a large format camera. A lot of people today use smartphone apps to figure those. And you'll see videos of people out in the field and they'll meter something and say, oh, my meter says eight seconds and I'm on my FP4. So they'll get out their little phone and they'll type in a little app to see what it is. I think that's kind of uh, a bit of a waste of time in a way. It's also a little bit kind of late to be figuring it. There's no reason why you can't figure out your landmark, uh, sort of your key exposures and things ahead of time. And instead of having to rely on an electronic device in the field where we may forget it or the batteries may go dead or somebody else may be talking on the phone or we're trying to take a picture or something and we can't rely on that, it's much uh, more uh, realistic, I think, to just use a card with the numbers written down on it, figure the numbers out ahead of time, and then write them down. Now, this card does a couple of things. One is it'll outlast me, unlike my smartphone, probably, hopefully. Um, and then this is also adaptable. If I have something like my reciprocity numbers and I realize, oh, I'm not getting quite enough exposure on what I thought my reciprocity correction should be, I can just scribble that number out and write another one next to it. I, I can figure it longer. If this says I need 15 seconds, I find that's enough, not enough, I can just go ahead and do 20 the next time I do that. Try it. Say, yeah, I like that at 20 now. I can just change this and put 20 seconds instead of 15. Smartphone apps and these really aren't adjustable like that. Most of them aren't adjustable at all. You can't change anything. The depth of field one, sometimes you can change the, the sharpness factor and they'll change the depth of field. But things like reciprocity, they're usually just on a mathematical formula and, and what you get is what you get, whether you like it or not. So I want things to be a little bit more flexible. So let's talk about the three that I have written down on this card and kind of how I would go about that. So like I said, I have reciprocity numbers. The main film that I use, I have to worry about reciprocity, is FP4. So I have those written down on here. These numbers actually came from Tim Layton's website. Uh, he does some blog posts on there, and he's done a lot of testing with FP4 in the past to figure out the uh, reciprocity corrections for it, and he offers those to you for free on his blog post. Very nice of him to do that. Instead of me having to go through testing and all of it, I wrote his numbers down. Again, if I felt like something needed a little bit of adjustment, I would just adjust them. Tim Layton's uh, FP4 reciprocity numbers actually seem to be fairly generous on the additional exposure. Other things that I've seen, like some of the smartphone apps, when you put this in, they come up with shorter exposure times than Tim does. So I suspect Tim, because he knows what he's doing and he knows what a good negative looks like, he's able to look at that and say, oh, you know, it needs a little bit more than, than what that actual mathematical formula said, so I'm going to give it another few seconds, and that becomes his correction on it. So it's better to get corrections like that from an experienced person who knows what they're doing than to rely on a smartphone app that we don't really know where it's coming from or where those numbers are really, really sourced from. Um, the other thing I have on here is hyperfocal distances for my large format lenses. And again, I just wrote them down as a little grid. It's over on this, this side over here. It's just a little grid with my lenses and then the f-stops going down and then the distances. So I can look on here and say, okay, my 150 lens at f32, the hyperfocal distance is 24 feet. So I know if I focus at 24 feet, I'm going to keep infinity and my near limb is going to be half that. Now, if I did that and I found out that negative, oh, that's not quite as sharp as I want it to be in infinity, again, I could go and change this. I could, I could make my sharpness uh, evaluation a little bit more critical, and I could go ahead and just, adjust this and say, okay, I need to, I need to uh, make that a little bit further away to keep infinity. Maybe go from 24 feet to 26 feet or something, 25 feet to adjust it. So even that's a little bit adjustable, just like the FP4 ones are. And again, um, that's something that I can do much more easily on a card. Okay, so there's one more thing I have written down on my little card here that I want to talk about, and that is bellows extension factors. I see people get really confused over bellows extension factors, and they are confusing. Um, my first uh, point of advice would be try to stay away from exposure factors because those are weird. They're a log base two. Um, they're, they're very difficult to deal with. A, a factor of eight is three stops because it's two times two times two. That's two to the third, which is a factor of three. They're very confusing. At all costs, stay away from factors if you can. Just do an F stops, exposure stops, because that's what we deal with on the camera. So what I did for, for Bell's extension factor, because we know when we move this lens further out, we focus on something closer, we are moving the lens further away from the film. We have light fall off at the film. It's not as bright with the lens further away. We have to correct for that. People get very, very technical about this. They take tape measures to measure the side of the camera and all this stuff. And they use their smartphone apps to figure out what's my 150 lens need when it's, when it's extended out to 180 millimeters, that kind of thing. 
I don't like doing any of that. And I do a fair amount of close-ups. What I decided a long time ago was that that's kind of a given. Well, if it is a given, if I have my 150 lens and it's extended somewhere where it needs, say, a full stop of exposure, that's always going to be the same thing. That's a mathematical given. I can figure that ahead of time and then figure out where is this lens focused? What's my subject distance when I need one stop of bellows correction? And that's what I did. I went through and figured those out. The way I did that, I took a smartphone app and I sat down with the bellows extension app and I said, okay, 150 lens. And I just kept putting in different extensions until it gave me, I didn't half stop intervals because I'm doing black and white. I can extrapolate, I can guesstimate in between my half stops if I need to. So I said, okay, where does my 150 lens, where is it extended when it needs a half a stop? So I just kept trying different numbers. Where did that happen? Well, it happens like 178 to 180 millimeters right in there is where it needs a half a stop of correction. I then took this camera, focused it in infinity, way out in the mountains in the distance, measured my whole front standard is going to move at the same time. I don't need to know where nodal points are on my lens or my film plane or anything else. All I need to know is this is focused in infinity. I then took a ruler, put a ruler next to it. It's all in my living room at home when I'm not making an image. And then I simply just rack the focusing out that extra 28 millimeters from 150 out to 178. Then I lock the focusing down. Then I took the whole camera and I actually closed the window screen, which is a beautiful texture to focus against. Great test target for focusing as a window screen. Then I just took the whole camera and moved it back and forth on the tripod with my focusing loop until the window screen was nice and sharp with the lens out at 178 millimeters. Now my camera is set up in a nice controlled environment where it needs a half a stop of bellows extension focused on my window screen. What I can do now is I can look and say, okay, how far is it from my lens to my window screen? What's my subject distance? That is a distance that in the field I can deal with very easily. I don't have to measure bellows extension, wonder where my film plane is, where my nodal points are, all this stuff. I don't have to do that. All I need to do is say, okay, I'm focused on something three feet away. Where does that fall within my range of bellows extension factors? That's what I have written down on this card. So for instance, the 150 lens, which is what this is, where it needs a half a stop of bellows extension is when a half a stop extra exposure because of my extension is when it's focused three feet away. It's, it's right in there 30, 35, 36 inches is where it's focused when it's extended to where it needs a half a stop. So that's a half a stop, okay? Chances are I'm already sort of rounding off my exposure on the brighter side on black and white to a half a stop anyway, which means if I'm focused beyond three feet, I probably don't even need to worry about it. I'm probably rounded off that much anyway. The only time I even get to the point where I have to say, okay, where do I need a half a stop of, of extension factor is when I'm focused three feet or closer. Where does one stop happen? It happens at 18 inches. It's getting pretty close, isn't it? 18 inches is only, you know, that far in front of my camera. So I, I can judge distances shorter than three feet very effectively. I can say, yes, that's three feet. No, that's more like two feet. No, that's 18 inches. That's a foot. Those are things I can deal with in the field. Even if I wanted to be really critical and measure those, the most I would really ever have to measure from the camera to the subject is three feet or maybe with a 210 lens, maybe four feet. You see, I don't have to try to get splitting millimeters on my on my camera bed or something to do that. I can say, oh, three feet, four feet, two feet. That's something I can deal with. So that's what I wrote down on this card. Much, much easier to just figure those out ahead of time, set the camera up, figure out where it's focused, and then write those numbers down, literally just by measuring the subject distance. So that's what I have on here. And again, those are mathematical constants. They're not going to change. I don't need to figure them again. I don't need to say, oh, I'm at three feet again, just like I was yesterday. What was my bellows extension? It's real easy. Look it up. In between numbers, like I said, I did it at half stop intervals. I can also do that um, at things like quarter stop intervals, because if three feet is half a stop and 18 inches is a full stop, if I'm focused somewhere between three feet and 18 inches with the 150 lens, I know I'm between a half a stop and a full stop of bellows extension correction that's needed. So if I'm focused at two feet, you know, 24 inches, 26 inches, where's that? Well, I can call it what I want in between, three, four, three quarters of a stop, two thirds of a stop, somewhere right in there. It's going to get me really close. It's going to take care of the problem, certainly more than just ignoring it and being two thirds or three quarters of a stop underexposed. I don't need to split the difference between two thirds and three quarters. That's so close. It's just not going to, it's not even going to be visible on a black and white negative. But the point is I want to get that extra exposure 
in the ballpark so that I have it. Now, if you were doing something like transparency film, you're doing, you know, 4x5 Velvia and it's costing a lot of money and you don't want to waste film, maybe you want to do this in third stop intervals. Set up your lenses, figure out what the, what the extensions are for third stop intervals and figure those out and write those down. But it's much better to do the math at home in a controlled, quiet environment for any of these, reciprocity, bellows extension, hyperfocal distance, much better to do that math at home and then write the numbers down so that when you're in the field, you got a really quick reference, no batteries, nobody else worried about talking on, the, on your phone when you're trying to use it or something. You can just look at it and say, oh, my reciprocity is I'm at eight seconds, that's 22. And my bellows extension factor, I'm focused, I got the 210 lens and I'm focused at four feet, that's a half a stop. Beautiful. That's how fast you should be able to do that and how accurately that you can do it. So just my thoughts on applying things like that in the field. Make it really simple. Do the math ahead of time. Don't keep doing the math over and over again. Write it down so that it's available to you very quickly and you'll find things just go much easier and you don't worry about it. You know, when I realize I need bellows extension on something, I'm not worried about it at all because all I got to do is grab my little card that's in the bag with the filters and cable releases and I'm good to go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that helps some clearing up some of these sort of mysteries and, and hard to apply things on uh, black and white photography. I'll see you in the next video.